Welcome to the sweet world of Gracie Poppin Cooking Kits. These fun Japanese candy kits let you become a candy chef right in your own kitchen. Join me as we unbox, mix, and create delicious treats. Will they taste as good as they look? And are they easy and fun to make? Keep watching to find out. After a bit of difficulty in finding a vendor, I finally located some Poppin cooking kits. These are very popular on TikTok and I've always wanted to try them, but most of them have gelatin and I'm a vegetarian so I can never eat them. After reading the ingredients carefully, they are all gelatin free so I'm very excited to try these. We're starting off with the Tonoshi Cakes Kit. I hope I pronounce that right. And these instructions are all in Japanese, but Watashi wa Nihongo Hanasimasen. Fortunately, these kits have a QR code that you just scan and it shows you a video on how to make it. So I'll be watching that while making these kits. So we have some pink powder, some sprinkles, a scoop, some blue powder, a piping bag, some ice cream cones, a tart shell, some wafers, and the tray. Here, I'm just cutting the tray according to the instructions. Step one is to cut up the wafers. I made an oopsie and cut them wrong, but it's okay because we will fix that later. Step two is to put the vanilla and strawberry powder into the trays here. Then we fill the small tray with water, pour it in, and mix it up. It's turned into this really yummy looking icing. Step three, I'm going to fill this piping bag with our cream and it says to put the pink on one side and the white on the other. It's time to assemble our ice creams. They have two holes here to hold the cones in place, but I had to hold them down or they would just fall right over. The piping bag took some getting used to. The first ice cream didn't look as nice as I wanted it to be, but by the second one, I got better with the piping and was able to get a nice peak. After the piping, I added some sprinkles and a wafer. Next, I'm putting together the tart, and thankfully that was a little easier. And now I'm finishing the tart off with some decorations. Moving on to the last sweet treat, the wafer cakes. We have to get creative here because I did cut the wafers wrong. So I'm using the icing as a glue to kind of push those broken pieces back together. These look so yummy and cute. I really like how the tart came out. I think that's my favorite one out of the five treats in this kit. Okay, let's go ahead and give these a taste test. Surprisingly, all five treats tasted as good as they looked. It was a little bland, but the cream tasted like cotton candy and the decorations were really yummy as well. I actually like bland and simple tasting food, which is another trait of autism, I believe, but I'm not sure. Some of you may like bland food too. You can let me know in the comments. The sprinkles tasted nice too, and I actually ate everything I made in one go, which probably wasn't a good idea in hindsight because I'm lactose intolerant and it's a lot of sugar. Of course, I'm a total sugar addict, so I couldn't help myself and ended up eating all of the leftover icing and sprinkles too. Next up is the waffle kit, and this one looks a little easier than the first. All these kits seem to have similar ingredients and materials. This one has more powders than the other one and a different tray, but other than that, they're all pretty similar. First step, just like the Tanashi Cakes kit, is to cut out the tray. Then we fill the triangle with water. Next, we pour that into the tray, add the powders, then stir it together to create the dough. I'm forming the dough into a ball, putting it into the waffle mold, and here is our waffle. Next, we just repeat the same process with the brown dough powder. So we now have one chocolate and two plain waffles. I did have to add a little more water than it called for to get all the powder fully mixed into the dough. If you use this kit, you may want to keep that in mind. 
Moving on to the cranberry jelly, I'm just taking some water and powder and mixing it all up until it has that gelatinous consistency. For the final step in this part, I pour small amounts of the jelly into the circles on the tray and let the jelly sit for 10 minutes. 10 minutes later. After letting the jelly sit, I made the watermelon cream. Here I'm just making the blueberry sauce and putting that into a piping bag. I'm now using the spoon to cut the jelly and it was very slippery so it was a little tricky. I took everything off our plate here so that I could make a drizzle of the cranberry sauce. Now I can reassemble everything. I put it onto my cake stand so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm just setting this up like they did in the video guide. I didn't try this on camera because the waffles tasted pretty bad. The decorations, the sauce, and the cream all tasted fine, but the waffles themselves tasted very fake and artificial. The final kit for today is the donut kit. Now let's see what we have here. We have powders and sprinkles, piping bag, a spoon, and finally our tray, just like the others. I started by cutting the tray and filling it up with water. Then I added the custard dough powder. Just like the waffle kit, I had to add a lot more water than it called for to get the powder fully incorporated. After mixing, I took two parts of the dough and made two little balls. I'm repeating the process with the cocoa dough powder to make the chocolate donuts. It was hard to get these pressed into the molds, but eventually I got them in there. The next step is to make the vanilla and a strawberry sauce. And just like the previous kits, I simply add water to the powders and mix them up. Next, we make the chocolate sauce, and this step is pretty self-explanatory. It's time to decorate, and I'm not going to get creative with the decorating here. I'm just following how it's decorated in the video. This was definitely my least favorite kit out of the three. The presentation of this one is a little messy, but they still look really cute. I did taste this one too, but again, like the waffles, it definitely didn't taste good. So these ended up looking really cute and were super fun to make. But if you have a kit that has things like waffles or donuts, I wouldn't eat those. You know how when you were a kid, you would eat Play-Doh just to see what it would taste like and instantly regretted it? That's what these donuts and waffles tasted like. Because of the sheer amount of emulsifiers and thickeners that are in these, they can make you feel pretty sick. It's time for my final thoughts on these kits. So if you're looking for something fun and cute to do, or if you're a mom and want to have a fun food art experience with your kid, these are great for that, especially because they're edible. If you have a young kid and they eat it, there's no harm done. If you want to eat something in these kits though, I would only recommend eating the decorations. It was also cool to just mix up some powders and water and see how it reacts and turns into a paste. You can decorate these however you like. I was following what it looked like in the video, but you can get creative with it and make it your own. My favorite kit was the Tadoshi Cakes kit. I would definitely recommend these pop and cooking kits. They're super cute, fun, and edible. That's all the time I have for today. Let me know in the comments which candy kit was your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe and stay creative. Bye!